church and family and friends. Good boy. My name is Cedric, if you do not know it. We will be coming today from 2 Corinthians, the book of 2 Corinthians. We uh, started a Bible study this week on 2 Corinthians on the letters that Paul is writing to the church. And today we're going to just go back over it and we want to have somewhat of a round table just to get some thoughts and feelings about what you all feel from this particular scripture and how we can help use this to change the world and the people in our church. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray first. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your word, for your anointing, for your favor. Allow our ears and our eyes to be open today to be able to see your word and understand it and hear it. Not just to hear, but for it to minister to our spirit. Use us today to be people of comfort, Lord. That is what you are in your word. Allow us to be vessels to be used by you and allow the anointing you place in us to come out and be used for others throughout the world. We thank you today for today for a revelation in this word. For a mighty name we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Second Corinthians. This is about Paul writing letters to the church, the Corinthian church. We spoke about it on Wednesday that this particular church was having some issues, some personal, emotional, spiritual issues. Uh, some of the things that God has asked for us to do as far as the church, this particular church was not doing. They were ostracizing people. They were accepting things that were not reverent to God in the church. And Paul decided to write a letter to encourage them. Now, just give you some background. Paul was Saul. And he was a person that killed and persecuted Christians. Mm -hmm. Look at how God will change your life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. He killed Christians. And now his name is changed to Paul. And now he's writing letters to encourage the church of how to be a better Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let that sink in for just a second. That it doesn't matter who you are, God can use you. It doesn't matter what your past is. doesn't matter what you've been through. God can use you. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm going to read this first part here for you of 2 Corinthians. For those of you all that might not have your Bibles or might not be uh, Bible savvy, still trying to turn the pages to find it out. It's the New Testament. And it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in our chair. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who cometh in us all our tribulations that we may be able to comfort them which are in any tribulation by the comfort wherein in we ourselves are comforted. For as the suffering of Christ abounded in us, so our consolation also aboundeth in Christ. Now, we, we went through 1 through 4 on Bible study on Wednesday, and just those four verses were very, very instrumental in our lives as a Christian. It speaks here in verse 3. It says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. We went over that Paul was writing this letter not just to encourage the church, and tell them some things maybe to work on, but he also did it to comfort them in Christ. He tells us right here that we serve the God of all comfort. That means each one of us has a different level of comfort that they need in their lives. Nobody is the same. And so I want to talk right now and get some feedback on you guys that not just in the church, but in your daily life, how is God showing you his comfort, making you comfortable in Christ, and what things can you do to be Christ-like for others? Anybody can speak at any time. I will first say that for me, when it says the God of all comfort, that means he can meet you wherever you're at. Mm -hmm. That means if you're down, if you've had people in your family that have, say for instance, you have a mother or father issues where they weren't, the particular person in your life that you needed for them to be. If you've had molestation issues, if you've had any type of issue in your life that God can meet you there. And he's not just a God that reprimands you, he's a God that gives you comfort, he encourages you. And in the encouragement, he strengthens you in your weakness. Mm -hmm. 
The word says the weaker you are, the stronger he becomes. I know a lot of times when we have bad things or things that happen in our life, instead of working on the situation, we look for an escape route or ease, or we find somebody who'll help us in our mess. And that gives us temporary comfort. But what happens when those people are gone? Who do you reside in for your comfort? And I don't mean just physical comfort. I mean comfort mentally, spiritually, emotionally. I think in our world right now, we have people that are maybe getting fed in one area and not in the full body. Maybe spiritually you're getting fed, but emotionally and physically you're not taking care of yourself, which kind of sets you back. Mm -hmm. So what are some things today that you guys, that makes you guys feel comfortable? I think that serving God, serving Christ, is our comfort. Out of all that's going on in this world right now, we still can be comforted by God our spiritual being, mm -hmm. our, who we walk with and talk with. Mm -hmm. Because without him, you'd be stressed to no end. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, just, I, yes, he, he is a comfort. Because uh, the way things are going on this earth right now is a state of depression. Mm -hmm. You would be afraid to even leave home now. If you didn't have Christ on yeah. your side. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So that's my thing. That, and I think about Paul. Paul was one that knew God changed his life. God comforted him because he was doing one of the worst sins that you ever could commit was to be out there killing and persecuting Christians. But God saw fit that he gave him grace and he gave him mercy to change his life. Yeah. And he can also change the way people are living right now. Mm -hmm. They yes, surrender. Yes, Amen. 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 Quick question for you guys. With Paul, like you said, on the road to Damascus, if you guys don't know the story, Paul, Saul was on the road to, to Damascus and he went blind. Mm -hmm. He heard the voice of the Lord. And if you notice in the scripture, in detail, it says he knew who God's voice was as soon as he heard it. Yes. And my question is, is our world comforted in ourselves, or are we comforted in Christ? That's a good question for the world. Are we comforting ourselves? Are we doing things to make us feel good? Because being a Christian ain't always about feeling good. Let me just Amen. say that. You know. Let me just say that. There's some times where you're not going to... It's been some times where I said, I don't want to be a believer. I don't want to forgive right now, Lord. And that's being honest and transparent. Yeah. But are we comforting ourselves with our own emotional things? Or are we residing in the comfort of God? Because those are two <laughs> different things. Our flesh can make us feel like we're comfortable. Mm -hmm. But God gives you... It says he's the God of all. Mm -hmm. Comfort, which means if it's emotional, spiritual, if you're sad, if you're down, if you're worried about your job, wherever you're at, he's the God of all of that. Yes, he is. So that's my question today, church. And, and for those watching today, pose that question to yourself. Are you living off of your own comfort? Because we can buy things that make us feel comfortable. We can buy shoes. We can get our hair done. We can go get our nails done. We can have surgeries to fix our bodies up. But is that a real comfort or is that a temporary fix? It doesn't last. Mm -hmm. It doesn't last. Because if you're looking for materialistic comfort, mm -hmm. it's not going to last like Sandra says. So you have to believe that the comfort that you're getting is from God. And you must understand how God is working. You can't look at it, well, this is how God's going to comfort me. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how God is going to do it all by himself. Amen. You can't add nothing to it. So I'm glad you said that. Now, here's a good thing, another thing to think about. Um, how do we get people as believers to a place to where they believe that they can be comforted by Christ? Because I'm going to tell you right now, as Christians right now, we don't do too many things to encourage other people to come to Christ. Let's be honest. If we look up, if we did a check on Instagram right now, 
for every person that was a believer and then followed their page and tried to put that with what God's rules and values are, it's not going to match up. Because I, I was in the, super, in, the, in the supermarket and this lady had a getting her groceries and she was short three dollars and change. Mm -hmm. and, and I just felt something. I felt something, you know. Mm -hmm. Ever. And I said, yep. Yeah. And I says, okay. And I said, well, I'll, I'll take care of that for you. And I, and I took care of her. And she looked at me. She said, why did you do that? I said, Jesus told me. And just left it like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I hope that instilled in her that Jesus is mm -hmm. working. Yeah. He he can't don't look at it this way. He might right. come that way. He's even the God of financial comfort. Mm -hmm. I, he also tells us to let your light so shine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They see your good mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy sitting there yesterday at, the, at uh, Harris Tea, and he would he said, "Brother, do you have a couple of dollars you can spare?" Mm -hmm. And I said, "Yeah, I got it." And I handed it to him, and he said, "God bless you." I, and I looked at him and I said, "There are still some good people in the world, mm -hmm. regardless of what's going on, brother." I said, "God bless you," and I walked on away. But he really showed that he appreciated. And it was a veteran. Mm -hmm. He was a veteran of the United States Army. And I understand that they're not being taken care of. And anytime you can show goodness towards people, hold a door open for somebody, whatever, it, it, it's a light that shines that we still have people on earth that are, are, are worthy of being Christian. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's where we're lacking right now. Yeah. There's something I thought about. Even with the world we live in, and we live in a world right now where people are hurting, sure. deep hurt, yeah. hurt that you just conversations just can't can't reach. And it makes me think about Paul and his road to Damascus. Because let's let's think about this. Paul knew he was killing Christians, mm -hmm. even after God saved him. Come on now, he knew. And then God put him right back in the same place that he was at, which means he had to comfort him enough to where he believed, I can go back and reach these people. Imagine how many people who saw him, if I'm not mistaken, on the way, the person that God gave a vision to, he said, oh, I'm not going over there with Paul, Lord. Mm -hmm. With Saul, excuse me. I know what he did. You're talking about Saul that was killing the Christians? You want me to go lay hands and minister to him? Yes. So... It makes me believe that if we realize first in Christ that this life is not ours. So what you go through has nothing to do with you. You might be placed in that situation just so that you make it through and God put you in position to help somebody else who has done the same thing. Well, I think we take a lot of situations and issues in life and we make it very personal. And that's the comfort we give. So I'll get mad now because a man cheated on me, so now all men are the same. And that comforts the person they think. And that's really not comforting. It really puts you in a different mind state of how to deal with men in general. Not just saying when men, but women as well. Men do the same thing where one woman may have hurt him and he's not healed, so now he's not able to be a blessing to others. He's carrying that to the next. He's carrying that. Imagine if the people were carrying what Saul did and didn't see Christ. Imagine that. Imagine that means now he can't minister. This is Paul, who was Saul, who killed Christians, writing a letter to the church, reprimanding them. He could be setting, he could be setting us up to kill us. That's a that's a natural that's a natural thought. That's that's a natural thought. thought. Yeah. yeah, he could be yeah. setting us up to kill us. Uh huh. Is he really here for us? Yeah, or he he but see, that's that's human comfort. Right. Yeah. See, we do things and we live throughout our life off our flesh, and that gives us comfort. Right. We show pictures. We do different things, but inside the inner man. One thing about the church in Korea we talked about. I'm gonna get to you, brother Ron. Is that they were very visual people. So they looked and dressed apart, but were trash on the inside. So I wonder how much of our world is dealing with that right now. Mm -hmm. We put out a presentation that looks good, but the minute we get in the car and get home, it's right back to the nonsense. Is that comfort? No. Or is that insanity? Brother Ron, just something to think about, church family. Mm -hmm. I thought about 
by Saul on the road. And I understand why God made him blind. Yeah, I don't want. It. You know, Come on with it. you you think about it. He says, okay. He was killing all these Jews and everything. So, once he had his 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 his, his journey on the road, God blinded him to let them know, I am in charge. He was by himself on that road. Yeah, I'm in I'm in charge. I'm doing this. Now I know what you did. I don't forgive you. You know, and by mm -hmm. me making you blind, you thinking that, okay, I'm a suffer now, but God gave back yourself. He knew he was going to do it. Yeah. That was a part of, it's difficult for people, some people won't understand this, but that was a part of the plan. It had to go down like that. Mm -hmm. We serve a, I don't say theatrical, but we serve a, a big God. So some of the things and blessings that he does is almost like a theatrical play. Mm -hmm. It's big. Uh throughout the Bible when different people were passing. Jesus didn't rush to them. He actually would wait for them to pass. And once they passed, he would then come and raise them, but he did that to make sure that there were enough people around to see. Think about that. Just for a second. Think about your life in the, in the aspect of Saul. Sure, we've all, we've all seen failed show of the word of God. Mm -hmm. And just think about some situations that you used to be in your life that one day you were changed. God gave you a chance to change your mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. to, to stop give your road. life to Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes, certain things happen to you that make you change. Mm -hmm. Or can push you in the right direction. In the right direction because Every one of us sitting at this table have, have sinned and fell short mm -hmm. of the glory of God. We all do. But he gave us a chance. Mm -hmm. Also, our people today, God is one, but they're not listening. Mm -hmm. They're not listening ears. They're not listening at all. Mm -hmm. Because once he decides what he's going to do. It's too late. You haven't changed your ways, mm -hmm. changed your life, mm -hmm. and come unto Christ because you're lost for the rest of your rest of your day. So I just think that we as a people, we got to get back to understanding. Stop being so disobedient. We got a disobedient generation right now mm -hmm. on every hand. Mm -hmm. And we got to get back to doing what is right because God is not happy with what's going on right now on this earth. And it's all over the world. Mm -hmm. Not just here in the United States, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Sin is raging. Mm -hmm. So by us reading this, it means that it is possible for you to change your ways, change your life. Mm -hmm. I just, we pray for our people every day mm -hmm. that they begin to realize they got to change. Now, I'm glad you said that. So I pose this to everyone and we're going to talk about it. <clears throat> you, you've been, someone talked to you about Christ and they showed you Jesus. They showed you examples of what he did. So what are we doing as the church to reach people? Because right now in our world, the church has wounded more people, if not equal or wounded more people than we have helped get saved. Yeah. It said this church, the Corinthian church was, they, they ridiculed, they didn't do forgiveness. So you could ask for forgiveness for a sin and they wouldn't let you back in the church. That's true. So my question is, what type of comfort are we leaning on when we judge and we ridicule people that come to church? What if Paul, what if Saul on the road to Damascus said, I don't want to hear you, even if he went blind? That was a choice. We have a choice every time a new member comes to church. We have a choice to either talk about them or talk to them. What type of comfort are we giving non-believers? Because they're comfortable in what they do. 
But what are we doing to make it so that way they can see Christ needs to be the head of all comfort? What are we doing in the church? Because like I said, we wounded just like this church. Paul wrote the letter basically saying, listen guys, stay focused in Christ first. Make him your main focus first and everything will be added to you. But if we use our flesh, like Brother Ryan said, he took away his vision because that's a part of our flesh too. Our eyes are deceiving. So is our flesh. Because most of the things we see, we think makes us feel comfortable. That's true. So what are we doing as a church? We're not reaching folks. Church don't want to hear this, but I'm going to say it. We're not reaching people. It's one thing for you to watch it on TV and watch it on the video, but you got to have a reverence and come. You can't just roll over out of bed and expect to get a great word. You're going to hear something that makes you comfortable, but what is your comfort? What happens tomorrow when that same situation occurs and you don't even remember what you heard from service on Sunday? Or well, what are we doing? My fault, go ahead. No. Because people are not seeking God. So what do we got to do as far as believers? Because he gave us a comfort that we're supposed to be able to give to others. But we've gotten selfish. It's just about me. I just want to be comforted. I want to look like this. I want to make everybody feel like I'm doing this. And even if you do have that, who are you blessing? Who else are you showing that comfort to? Go ahead, Okay. But I was going to um, point it back to verse 4, but he said he comforts us all in our troubles. Mm -hmm. We have to know how to relate to the person. Uh -huh. If we're not being able to relate to the situation, we can't be all, yes, okay, God bless you, my sister, my brother. It's more than just yeah. that. Mm -hmm. A lot of it with us within the church, unfortunately, can be lip service. Yeah. We could do a lot of lip service, but we have to be able to relate to the person. We have to be able to understand what they're going through. Mm -hmm. We can't always be about, I'm going to pray for you, my sister. I'm going to pray for you, my brother. But listen to what they're saying because right. there's some of the things that's what they're saying that we can relate Reveals. to. Mm -hmm. yes. we got to be able to relate to that person. Just saying, I love you, my sister, my brother, I'm going to pray for you, is not enough. You just sent them away yeah. feeling the same, same way, way that they felt. So if you want to be comforted, if you was comforted in your troubles, right. you, you as the individual should be having that compassion. You mm -hmm. should be able to have to be able to relate to the person. If you can't relate to them, and I think that's with the generation... The younger generation mm -hmm. saying that the older generation can't they don't really understand. Relate. Yeah. Because we can't, we're here and they're there and we have to be able to come and have an equal match with them. I think that we are a lot of older generation sees one thing. As you get older, this is what you're accustomed to. This That's is how it. you do it. You don't, you only, if it's this, it has to be this. And this no, generation is like, no, that it doesn't have to be that way. I may be talking to you like this, but I'm, a lot of our younger generation is telling us what they need and we're not listening. Yes. They're yeah. telling you exactly what I need in these songs. I'm taking drugs, I'm taking pills, yeah. I'm emotionally scarred, my yeah. family was not here. Yeah. They're reaching out, but instead of us helping, we're doing just like the church in Korean. We're yes. looking and we're criticizing. Yes. Yes. So what do yes. we do? Let's get this straight. Everybody's not supposed to pray for everybody. Yeah. Amen. I might get in trouble for that. But just because you see somebody right there, if the Holy Spirit doesn't move you to go do it, don't do it. I'm not telling you that it's wrong. You should pray for everyone. Mm -hmm. But be careful because God shows you who you are connected to. And sometimes if you're not connected to that person, we can take them off track. Mm -hmm. As a church, we have to understand that God placed us here to do the same things he did in great. But we forget about it. We get caught up in our emotions, and I'm not saying that everybody's not going through something. Everybody is. Mm -hmm. But one thing I want to say, and I want to hope everybody hears this, if they're coming to church, shut up. Yeah, yeah. They're at church. I don't care what they're going through or what you've seen from them. They're at church. That's the first decision. God says, in his comfort, draw near to me, and I will do what? So by going to church, somebody that hasn't been going to church normally decides I've been living in sin today, something's driving at me, shut mm -hmm. your mouth. You're doing just as bad as sin as Stephen by talking about him or ridiculing him. Think about this. Paul is writing this letter 
and he starts off the letter by comforting the church. He doesn't immediately look at their issues or what's going on in their life. He immediately says, first, let's, let's concentrate first on Christ. With, in other words, it doesn't matter what you're going through. I serve a God who can meet you wherever you at. You just got to open up and be understanding and open to it. He'll give you the understanding. So I say this again. This is, to me, this is a lot about discipleship. Because look at the, all the variables of this. Saul killed Christians and now he's ministering. Administering the word. Not just the word. He's really walking and ministering. Mm -hmm. Same way he was killing Christians. If we look at that in our day and time, that would have been a murderer that turns into a preacher. Mm -hmm. But because he murdered and you can't forgive him, you don't want to hear nothing. Mm -hmm. When God says, I'm the God of all comfort, so if I forgave him and threw it in the sea of forgetfulness, who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I don't recall any scripture where God asked us about our opinion mm -hmm. or what we thought about a situation. Mm -hmm. Ever. He says, I want to hear your thoughts, and I want us to pray together to be on one accord. But if your prayers ain't lined up with my will, I mean, mm -hmm. what you doing? Amen. One thing we have to realize is whenever people are going to change, the first thing they're going to do is point of faith. Yeah. Yeah. Always remember this. People will remember you where they met you. Yeah. Not location, but where they met you at mentally, yeah. from children. Yeah to adults anywhere they met you with. It doesn't have to be a physical place. I just remember, how many times have you seen old friends and they come back and be like, hey, what's going on? You ready to go get some drinks? You about to go out and hit them? And you're like, ah, I'm good. We are not tonight. What's wrong with you? You acting brand new now? I, uh, yeah, I actually am. Mm -hmm. We have to, This generation is very wounded. And what we have to help them understand is we cannot, let's go ahead and say this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We cannot comfort the world. That's his job. Mm -hmm. Our job is to be in position and to be used by him. Mm -hmm. People throw out the Bible was changed and it was changed by man. No, silly. It was inspired by God but written by man because he knew you was going to say that. And he's been inspiring people to do his will for years. Mm -hmm. Paul, us, as believers. That's our job. We're supposed to do the same thing Paul does. So are we reaching people as much as we should? That's just a question for everyone. No, the church isn't. The church isn't. And us is and even if the church stapled, if they're not going to church, what are we doing when we're in our everyday life? Are we comfortable in our job? I just put scriptures and stuff up around my cubby and I just pray for everybody. That's not using your gift. And let me say this for folks, just because you think you're an introvert or an extrovert and you want to stay in the house and you think staying away from people because you don't like people is going to help you, that has nothing to do with Christ, Amen. period. He placed you here to be an ambassador. Ambassadors don't sit on the side and hide from people. But when he get, allows you to see your weaknesses, he gives you comfort in them. And maybe your weakness is exactly what he's going to use for you to bless somebody else. Amen. That's what Paul did. I want people to realize this. We are in, we went through four verses mm -hmm. of a scripture. Just four. And we're digging deep into it. When you start reading the word, ask God to give you revelation and slow down. Don't just rush to read a scripture and be like, oh, I read it today and have completely no understanding of what's going on. You just read it to get comfort. Mm -hmm. This is food. That's what it says. Spiritual food. This feeds your spirit. So the more you read it, the more revelation he gives you. This is just four verses. We haven't even got to the rest of when Paul, when Paul probably really got a hold of them. Number two, notice that Paul did not come with anger nor frustration, nor did he point a finger. First thing he did was say, let's talk about Christ. First and foremost, if you don't put Christ ahead the head of the situation, you're not going to leave nobody. No. Right. Not only with, with compassion and comfort, you have to be a person that's comfortable with yourself to reach somebody for the Lord. Let me go ahead Amen. and say that. Y'all yeah. yeah. folks out here with these nasty attitudes and cussing folks out all the time, don't pray for me. 
Not that I don't want people to pray for me, but don't pray for me because I don't feel like your prayer is making it up. God is a God of love. Love doesn't show, doesn't keep track. Love doesn't have a tally. Love doesn't see anger. Love doesn't hold grudges. A part of the reason our world is in trouble is we don't love ourselves. We don't even do ourselves like that. We don't spread joy when we're joyous. If God brought you through something and he showed himself faithfully in your life, you have no choice but to show joy to other people. How dare you? <laughs> that means you're really not a believer. That means you just got comforted in that situation. Uh -oh. And then if you only find comfort in situations, how many situations do you have to keep getting yourself into to make yourself feel comfortable? Go ahead, bro. It's almost like giving a testimony. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to spread or talk to others about what God brought you out of. But you're holding it on to yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm yet to figure that out. I think that a lot of, here's the main thing that our world is a part of this. We're wounded. And we were always taught, especially as men, to never show your emotions. weakness or emotions. Yeah. And now you have men that have been in relationships, that have left relationships, that have left women to raise men in areas where, and let me say this, you women that are raising young men, I know you guys are doing an excellent job, not attacking you all, but you can't teach him how to be no man. No. It's not your job. God didn't create it that way. And regardless what you do, you can but the fact that the man is not there, that changes the dynamic. So now you have a wounded young man or woman that doesn't know how to deal with emotions. We say daddy issues and we laugh and crack jokes, but a father instills discipline and protector in a family. A mother is a nurturer. She's the healing. She's the backbone. That's why God took a rib. A man can't stand up without his rib. So why do you think God took the rib from a man for a woman? With the right family and nucleus, you can build a family if it's on Christ. But we are taught not to show emotions. You have young ladies out here now that are screaming for help. They're writing all kinds of songs. They dress in any kind of way and are screaming for help. And they'll swear they don't care. It's a hot girl summer. And it's hot in hell, too. Mm -hmm. yes. You want a hot girl summer, you can get one permanently. But that brings them comfort right now because as Christians, we're not showing them anything different. Not saying we have to be holier than thou and we can never fall short because that's a part of it. But I would hope that the closer you get to him, the less that happens or you're working on things. Because no, number one, when you're trying to change somebody or not change them, but try to lead them to Christ, they're going to they're gonna see everything wrong you do. So don't look at it as an attack from them. Look at it as God just showing you some transparency. Because maybe you're supposed to learn something from them. Just like they're supposed to learn something from you. Instead of getting emotional and pointing fingers. Child, I can't believe they came to church like that. They here. I bet you they get the word before you do it. You've been sitting on the front. Yep. How did you come to church? How did you get here? How did you get here? And don't get mad at me because you haven't changed anything and you still come to church. <laughs> Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, again, going back to the testimony thing. Going back to the testimony thing. Um, I did, for the life of me, I don't know why people just don't testify what God brought them out of. Now, I've done a challenge on Facebook and on YouTube and Instagram. I said... I want to know who all going to do this acceptance challenge. All you got to do is get on there and talk about the goodness of God, what he done to you. And ain't going to one person said, I accept the challenge, but he didn't put down what he wanted to put down. Now, on YouTube, the girl on there, she, she put down what she done and a random act of kindness. Mm -hmm. I say that after every video. Always do a random act of kindness because mm -hmm. you don't know where your blessing coming from. Mm -hmm. they, they don't, they don't want that. So if you're wounded... I don't want to tell you my personal business if you're wounded. Right. And not on top of that, God is not just the God of our comfort. He's the God of everybody's comfort. So I blessed you so you can go bless somebody else. I changed. Think about this. You never think about how God orchestrated everything else around you just to get to that one specific moment where somebody speaks in your life or they lay hands on you. You don't know everything he did. 
we just know that he stopped Saul on the road to Damascus. Yeah. We don't know the extent of everything that he did with everybody else involved in the situation just to get to the point to where Paul can write this letter. So with testimonies, a lot of people have comfort in themselves, but they only have temporary comfort for God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm only comforted that you did that and I feel good about it for two days but after that I'm right back to what I'm doing because yeah. you have no foundation in you understand mm -hmm. and I don't know you I'm not here to tell my business I'm open book. see it's funny it's, it's interesting that we have social media but yet people still hide themselves because mm -hmm. social media is supposed to show other people who you are and things in your life but yet we hide behind that because we're comforted in a photo I always did what's going on with me. I'm an open book. I, I have things going on with me that relates to some people. Mm -hmm. And they be like, oh, man, you know you went through that. Like, There's yeah, a, of course. Everybody has a, each one of us have a group of people that we're divinely connected to. Every one of us. And it does, some of us are some the same people, some aren't. And so your, your blessings in your life, first of all, is not yours. It never was about you. So I realized that. Like, wait a minute. Y'all got to understand that. I'm going to say it again. We go through a lot of sins, and no sin is greater than the other. But this brother was killing people. Not just people. He was killing people that he now prays with. Mm -hmm. And we don't just say killing. Paul was massacring women, children, men, families. And he changed his entire walk of life. I'm going to say this to guys, and I want you all to hear this. God uses your weakness as your strength. I'm going to let y'all think about that for a second. If you've had horrible men and you have daddy issues, he'll send the man to be in your life to be a blessing to you, not to be the blessing for you. Just because he sends a man and he understands where you're coming from doesn't mean that that's the man you're supposed to be with. That may just be a vessel that God is using for you to hear. He uses your weakness as your strength. Paul, Saul killed Christian. Now he's ministering to him. I would have been like, all right, Lord, look now. <laughs> you know I'm with all the smoke now. Don't put me in here with this brother because I know he, similar to how people look at pastors on TV. You hear a million things about pastors. Of course you are. They're doing the will of God. And if you openly confess Christ before man, what do you think is going to happen? I'm not saying that these pastors are doing that, but I don't, it doesn't surprise me that you hear a whole lot of stuff. Because it's not affecting the person. You're trying to discredit the word. Yeah. That's what you're doing. And it says people will pick bits and pieces to fit what they want. Because that helps you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. But yeah. if God provides all comfort, what if your methods of providing comfort for yourself are minimal compared to his. Well, well, my thinking is that God is the judge. We can't judge nobody. Mm -hmm. But we what do. they do. We do. But well, we, we do. do. Yeah. You can't judge people for being who they think they are. They want to be uh, whatever they decide to do in their lives. All we can do is pray for them. God is the judge of them. We're not the judge. Nothing we can do about it. The only thing we can do is have mercy. He has mercy on those people. Mm -hmm. He has grace on them. They're still here. And they're still here. But until our church gets back into preaching what God's word says, taking nothing away and adding nothing, mm -hmm. that is when things will get back in order. Mm -hmm. But right now, church is out of order. Mm -hmm. So we got to get back in order with God's word. The world is out of order mm -hmm. because of biblical principles. They have no biblical principles. Mm -hmm. Even in our leadership, in our White House, mm -hmm. no biblical principles. Things that are being done are wrong. They're not of God. But the only thing we can depend on is God. God is the judge of everything that's going on on this earth. So we better be mindful 
their time is drawing nigh. Mm -hmm. Warning, they are not listening. Mm -hmm. Says I have ears to hear and eyes to see. Yeah, I'm exactly right. right. A couple things made me come up while you were saying that, Elder. Number one, the last verse, last couple sentences in the Bible says, if anybody adds anything or takes anything away from this Bible, the plagues of this Bible will come upon you. Yeah, so just look at your world right that's now. That's mm -hmm. number one. Number two, the word is supposed to be spread. Jesus walked as he ministered. Correct? Mm -hmm. It says we live in this world, but we're not of this world. So some of the things that are going on in this world, the reason they ain't changed is because we ain't praying. Mm -hmm. We may be praying, but you're not praying with no authority. Mm -hmm. You can pray and talk to God all day, but some of them prayers don't even hit the ceiling and come down. We got to put Christ for, first and foremost in our lives. Like I said, Paul probably was upset with this church. He probably could have been angry. But the first thing he did, if, the, if God is your rock, he's the first thing you go to all the time. I know I've not always been the man of God he wanted me to be. Never have I been perfect. I've made horrible mistakes. Been a horrible person. But anytime God uses me to bless somebody else, I get excited. Amen. That may be just me. I get excited. I don't care. It's a feeling you've never had. When God uses you and you clearly know after you've talked, I don't remember anything I just said to this person. I was here, but I don't remember any of that. And you see... See, what God will do is, if he's the God of compassion, that means he'll meet you exactly where you're at to get you where you need to be. Yep. So even if you're praying for somebody and you're not in a good spirit, but you're like, Lord, I'm going to push through this. He'll show you something in the midst of that to comfort you to keep going forward. Mm -hmm. God's word builds you up. It strengthens you. Amen. Even before you get reprimanded, the Bible says that we're supposed to go to Christ first and then talk about it. So that way your spirit is in the right place to receive it. If not, you're in your flesh. It's no telling. Mm -hmm. I've said stuff to folks, well, I ain't trying to hear that. I'm like, okay, well, that's what God told me to tell you. Mm -hmm. You can tell me all you want to, but it's going to hit you. It might, they're seed planters and seed waterers. Mm -hmm. We live in a microwave world where everybody wants everything mm -hmm. right now. And so guess what? We serve a God that can give you a right now blessing. In the Bible, it says expediently. But that's after having reverence for him. You mm -hmm. can't take bits and pieces of the Bible to fit what you want. So you can't run the streets and then be like, well, let me speak this scripture, child. Because you never know who's watching you. I put God on the shelf and get him down. Let me say this. Right, let me say this. The haters, the lurkers, and all of them are there for a purpose. You paying attention to them emotionally as opposed to be as as instead of paying attention to what you're doing, give them a show. If they want to have something to watch, show them what God can do in your life. Amen. 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 Don't give them a reason. They're gonna, God placed them here for a purpose. People forget this. It says God says, I will prepare a table of your enemies. And everybody gets excited about that. But you got to remember, preparing the table means you got to have people there. Right. So you got to have some haters. you got to have some unbelievers. you got to have some folks that's going to ridicule you. Why every time I see you, you talking about the Bible? Ha! Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you. God has us interact with people, and the pandemic was used to keep you from others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly God right. stopped time yeah. and financially gave you. He gave you all of the comfort that you needed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yet people came out of the pandemic worse off than they did before they went in. Yeah. Because you had to be involved with yourself. Yeah. You had to spend time with yourself. You had to spend time with your partner who you found out, I don't really know. I know. I couldn't understand during the pandemic how people couldn't stay in their own house. They didn't tell you to go to somebody else's house. They said stay in your house. Because you in a problem. And that's an issue. So now when we get out, we already were in a world that was very visual and we don't have to talk. We don't answer phones. We text message. We care about if you saw my message or not. Let me say that. I don't care what color message come back on mine. I will text you back when I feel like. That's just, you know what I mean? Right. That's a, you're looking for a comfort. Right. They put a question mark. If you answer my question, it's not a time limit. I thought you sent me the text. If you want to answer right now, call me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So what I'm saying is, is as a body of Christ, not just in the church facility, because we're the church ourselves, each one of us. Paul is trying to remind them, listen, you are Christ first, who gives you comfort. So stop trying to lead and be led by your own comfort and judge others. Amen. I point this finger at you. This is not a gun finger, but every time you point a finger at somebody else, there's three more pointing at you. What if God revealed everybody? What if we had a, a screen that went across our forehead and it just showed everything you did wrong all the time? That wouldn't be comfortable, would it? But think about that. We would probably judge people off that too. Well, child, I didn't do that. You see, mine is the. Mine always find fault in someone else and not. We're in a world that's wounded. That's what the blood is here for. Don't forget, Jesus walked with the disciples and they still. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to give you something even better. Even Jesus asked for comfort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take this. Take it away. Take the cup from me. And he asked the disciples to stay up and pray with me, guys. In our terms, hey, fellas. Hey, look, I'm not feeling too good tonight. I need y'all to stay over tonight because maybe I don't want to go out to drink. And I don't want to drink. But if we don't have brothers and sisters in Christ that we can encourage and call that we feel comfortable with, I just probably went out there without y'all. And now y'all don't even know what my... You Think about why does God just have people come to your vision and your spirit out of nowhere? You're a part of the comfort job. You're a part of the comfort project. Do you know that God wants to provide a comfort for everybody in the world through us? We missed that. It says the same things Jesus did, you're to do, and greater. Jesus walked and comforted the world. Think about that now. Mm -hmm. Everywhere he went. That's why he said, when I go home, I only got a place to lay my head in my own neighborhood. And let's just say, wherever you're at, you're going to get the most ridicule and drama. Mm -hmm. Because they only see you from where you were at. Yeah. So, as believers, I want us to start remembering what God brought us from. I, I have a challenge for you. Instead of getting angry or frustrated or mad at people this week, because there's a choice you have. There's a moment before you allow that to linger on and keep going and keep talking about the situation. You have a moment to stop. I dare you to start just praising God before you even do it. Dare you to? The minute somebody makes you angry and you want to lash out, I dare you to start just saying Jesus and start praising him before you say anything and see what happens. If the enemy is sent to destroy everything that God has placed, what makes you think that He's not going to send people to piss you off? Amen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. And let me say this to comfort some people: the area of your weakness is your strength. I said he'll use your weakness to be your strength, which means he'll send somebody that's went through the same things you have to strengthen you so that way you can go out and do the same thing. Yes. Stop being afraid of your weakness. The more vulnerable you are, the more God can use you. And let me just say this, just to be frank with y'all. You're not really tricking nobody, because we can see. Those that are anointed can look right at you. I've looked at folks before. My mother has taken me around prophets, evangelists, these big time people before, and she's like, this is a mighty vessel. I'd be like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and she said, well, Cedric, you're not living right. You, I know that one. <laughs> like the, what did the Spirit say in the Bible? I know Paul. He said, I know John the Baptist, and I know Jesus. But who are you? You need to understand that the enemy knows the power and authority you have. And he knows that if I can take comfort and give you a false hope, which is what his job yeah. is to do, yeah. then he will do that. Yes, yeah. Stop being scared to go to church. Stop worrying about what everybody else says. And who cares? They talked about Jesus. Like they talked about Jesus. Like they talked bad about Jesus the same way he does. I'm going to say this. If you haven't read the Bible, your life is in it. You care what nobody tells you. Your life is in it. You just got to read it. Everybody's life is in the Bible. He only left you basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what Holy Bible stands for. Mm -hmm. So that means he gave you instructions, like Elder Steve said, to give you 
to put you in a position to where you can make decisions to allow your comfort level to go. God will do that. But if you follow his will and his principles, you won't look for physical comfort. That's temporary. How many times have we done things and then thought an hour later, like, what in the, <clears throat> why did I do that? Without anybody saying anything to yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And I want y'all to know that that's just not you just being a good person or I just got a good heart. No, that's the compassion of Christ mm -hmm. in you. Mm -hmm. Nothing you have, ooh, nothing you have is yours. It was all Amen. a gift. Yep. Amen. And you're the gift that's supposed to keep on giving. Right. Mm -hmm. Notice we put a lot of things that signify Christ in the wrong area. They say, what, the cards and the cards, the gift that keeps on giving, but Christ placed you here to be a gift. Each one of us is like a Bentley. You know what I mean by that? You're one of a kind, handmade. There'll never be another yes. like you. So why wouldn't you want to spread the joy if I'm one of a kind? We appreciate one of a kinds in people like LeBron James or Tom Brady. But why don't we appreciate the one... God, that's the one of a kind that we are. Yes. And if he's in us, then we are one of a kind. It may not be speaking. It may not be ministry. It may be prayer. It may be healing. We all have a gift. And I employ each and every one of you today to ask God to show you comfort in the area of your gift. Because 99% of us in this world are doing something that we were not ordained to do. You have power and authority to conquer anything so you can do it, but that's not the end game that God has for you. Some of us are at jobs that have absolutely nothing to do with your calling. It's just preparation. We want everything to happen right now, but in this, even with the letters from Paul mm -hmm. to the church, there's steps and there's a, there's a direct, how should I say, rule system that you got to follow. Our world doesn't follow any rules, and guess what we've done, church? We fall right behind them. I'm talking to the ones that go to church, the ones that don't go to church, the ones that's been members for years and sit on the front row. Sister Anthony and them helped name the church. Thank you. That was your gift, naming the church. Now, we have to add to it. I believe Paul was basically telling these folks that, God, that the enemy is never supposed to be in the church, but y'all bought him in. <laughs> we want to talk about the church and talk about people that's in it, but most of them spirits came in there because of you. I think that this is amazing. That's why the first four verses were very interesting to me when I read it because it signifies exactly what's going on right now. People would rather do anything than go to church right now. Y'all understand that? Stay at home. People will do anything. And their main thing is, I'm going to get myself together. Yeah, I'm not going to go to God till I got myself to, together. Yeah, you never going to get yourself together. Let me say this. Let me look in the camera directly. That's not going to happen. None of us got it together. Yeah. No. Nobody. I don't have to know you to know none of us have got it together. Each day. Yes, we do. Don't let Instagram and them fool you by seeing these people with all this money because money doesn't give you comfort. Most people with that are very wealthy are miserable. That's a difficult life. You don't know who really is your friend. You don't know who is for you or against you. So now if you don't have Christ and you're wealthy, now you're paranoid. And you're only going to do things in your physical flesh or what your money can do to make you feel comfortable. Some of this fake money. Huh? Some of this fake money. But then you have people that are grounded in Christ that he's given money to that keep giving it away. See, I'm going to say this. Paul is trying to tell the church, if I can't trust you with the least, how can I trust you with the greatest? Mm -hmm. So if I can't trust you to sit at this job right now and be a vessel even when don't nobody pay attention to you, how can I send you to the big place where I need you to lay hands on everybody? Because if you won't do it here, you're definitely not. Like people say, well, I'll change when I get there. Amen. You're changing your location with a different, same mentality. Amen. Which is insanity. That goes for all of them. Today I want everybody to think about what are you doing or thinking about on the road to Damascus? Because all of us are on that road. Mm -hmm. That means you had to be a Christian killer before, but that means you sin. That's all you got to look at. Right. Saul said. Sure. 
Jesus. Regardless of what he did, he sinned. And what are you going to do? Because you're on the road to Damascus, and right now God is talking to you. Are you hearing him? Because you know the enemy talks to you, too. Let's just get that straight out there. Some of y'all try to say God sent you to do that, and you know good and well that was not his voice. <laughs> he didn't tell you as many times I've done things and I said well I thought the and God clearly told me that was not me son <laughs> you can see that now and it was the reason why he blinded why he blinded I don't want you to see nothing ain't nobody else nothing. but me Listen. there comes a time where your ears can hear and your eyes can see yeah. if God took away our vision what do you think the pandemic was he took away vision you couldn't see anybody you had to talk on the phone yeah. you couldn't text you had to communicate with people, and we came out of that worse than ever. We walk by people that are miserable. We don't speak. We don't interact. We don't hear from Christ because he doesn't live like that, and I'm sure he places us in positions to do his will. Think about it. Saul was going on Damascus. He thought it was a regular day. I'm about to catch me a couple more believers. I'm going to go to the creator. Regular routine day. And he goes blind and he hears it. And the first thing he said is, is that you, Lord? See, God can't judge if you don't know better. A part of the world don't know better. But we do. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Stop minimizing God because you have a trough of people that you're supposed to reach. Not just one or two. Although each one, it says that we help lead to Christ. It says the earth shakes and the angels rejoice. But why don't we have a full-fledged party? Let's just start winning souls. Let's stop worrying about what the, the government is doing and what other people are doing. Let's just start getting full names and putting them on the prayer list. Let's just start putting companies that in the name of Jesus we pray that this place closes because they're not producing any fruit for you, Christ. As opposed to talking about management. Mm -hmm. Maybe management is shaky and maybe God is working on something behind the scenes. We serve a behind the scenes God. He don't need credit. We do. We don't want to always have credit. But he wants credit. You understand? He wants you to give him reverence. Mm -hmm. He wants you to respect him and appreciate him. No graven images before me. Not your money. Not the girls. Not your only fans. Not the strip club. Not liquor. Not cars. Not clothes. Jewelry. Anything. Put no graven images before me. That means anything. What are we doing as a church to help change the world? I want you guys to think about that. It's basically it's a conversation about your Christian walk. That's basically what Paul is writing in. In this day and age conversation, what you got going on, man? Y'all don't have, y'all are showing no Christ right now. Jesus is nowhere near here. And he's not ridiculing. The main thing I want you guys to take from this is the first thing he does before he attacks is he puts Christ on the scene. Mm -hmm. I'm writing this letter to encourage you and comfort you, my brother, in the same Jesus Christ that comforts us in all things. That means we serve the same Christ and whatever you're going through, he can provide comfort for you in that, just like he's doing me. We got to stop trying to figure out what, how everything is supposed to go and just let God lead you. It ain't your job. He didn't ask you. <coughs> and you can't understand what he's trying to do anyway. Because if I take your vision, then you can't see. Come on, Holy Spirit. You can't see. God doesn't let us know half the things that he's doing because ah, you're going to mess it up, bro. You get ready to talk. And you can't even... That's why he says, I want to bless you exceedingly and abundantly. That means your vision can't even see what I'm trying to do. Your mind can't even fathom or you haven't even thought about that. We want temporary fixes and comfort right now. But God's like, well, I'm like seven, eight stages later to give you a lasting comfort in me. This, this scripture encourages me. This, this, Paul was tough. Paul was a tough, y'all got to think about that. Imagine killing Christians and knowing God tells you you got to go preach to them. Mm -hmm. That's like a rape victim going to a women's <coughs> conference yeah. and deciding I'm going to open up and talk about being raped. The same comfort that God gives you in order to stand up and give, as Brother Brian said, your testimony. That's what I was getting at, Brian. It's the comfort of Christ that tells you to give your testimony. 
But the only way you give your testimony is because God has taken you from it. You can't give no testimony if you're still in it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not going to reach nobody. Like the streets. Not going to reach nobody. Mm -hmm. You can hear it, and that might be a seed planter or water, but there's going to be somebody, a seed planter, there'll be somebody to come by to water. Testimonies are important, church. And one thing about it, people know you, they see how you live. Mm -hmm. They watch. They, they watch you. So, you know, they they um, they gonna they gonna see you as an example or they're gonna see you as you being the same as they are. You ain't no. changed not one no, bit. You just said yeah. see. Yeah. And what they did see he, and what did he do to solve? He blinded him. Yeah. So he couldn't see. Exactly. If you're not living for Christ, you can't see nowhere. There's a veil open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see temporary. You see, it's almost like tunnel vision. You only see me. That's why God says, I put you in front of a mirror in James, and you don't remember what you look like. Because mm -hmm. you've gotten so off track. Mm -hmm. Guys, this is something. Show comfort this week. Amen. Compassion. Make others around you feel good about themselves. It doesn't have to be something major. You could just stop mm -hmm. and say good morning. You look good. Today's mm -hmm. a great day. Mm -hmm. And keep it moving. That's right. Okay. Don't expect the gift to come back to you. Just do it and God will give you a different comfort. Mm -hmm. If you do things expecting something in return, yeah, yeah. Nothing ever go you're never going to get anything returned back the way that you feel you should. We never will. That's not yeah. life. Life's not built like that. There'll be people that you're joyous and you show compassion and love to that may turn against you. But as long as they're lined up and that's the person that God told you to, you do it. But then also be prepared to step away. Sometimes I think we stay trying to minister and help somebody longer than God says because they stop looking at God as the focus and start looking at you as the comfort for them. God is a lasting comfort in all that we do. Think about that today. If he can comfort you after all that nonsense you done did, and you think we don't know, but God will reveal it. Take it from somebody who knows. He'll reveal everything you've ever done to somebody. And because they're comfortable in Christ, they won't judge you, but they'll speak to you in love. Amen. Amen. What are we doing? Everywhere we go this week, I want you guys to build a church. And what I mean by that is every place you lay your feet is a church. And you have service. Either you minister to somebody, or you sing, or you pray, or you lay hands. You do whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to do. But choose the church everywhere you go. The grocery store, the gas station. Show joy. Even if they don't understand it, show joy. <laughs> Saul didn't understand it. Why would you pick me? I've been killing your people. Boy, I got something for you. What? <laughs> I'm going to say this, and then we're going to get some questions. You never know what God will do to you for somebody else. You never know. You might just say, hey, I just want to tell you God loves you. And I've seen that happen before and I've said it to people and they break down because now you're right on time. It's God's time and not ours, Joe. Amen. Any thoughts, Amen. ideas, questions, anything you guys want to add? I think that um, we all know that God knew us before we were born. And some people, he knows how much they can they from me and take before they will actually come to him. Because I know it was for a long time. I knew people were telling me about the church. They was, you know, my mama was telling me I need to go to church. People, it was just like I was just being defiant. Mm -hmm. But that one time mm -hmm. when I see myself about to die, that was it. All of it. I like everything. Made sense it, it everything else started, you know, started making sense. And then when I leave the situation and then people tell me that, you know those people used to do drugs with? Well, they, they died. Mm -hmm. They all died. If I would have been there, I would have mm -hmm. been there. But it's like God took me out. Right? He let me see it right at the right time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like he, but some people, as you say, they don't hear, they don't have eyes to see or ears to hear. And they keep on that, that roller coaster, mm -hmm. and they keep on, and, and their lives start to spiral out of control, mm -hmm. well, it becomes too late. And if you're not lined up with the will of God, mm -hmm. what if God has you be one of the people to minister to them right when they have their vote? 
and because you didn't say your testimony or you didn't open your mouth or I don't talk to folks like that, they don't look like no Christian or they don't believe. You got a brother right here that would have shot you dead. Right. Let's just be real about that. Yeah. Put this in day terms. Saul was pulling up on the block, ready to hit anybody that was a believer. They go to church on Sunday. Whole family. Allow God to use you to be able to relate to this generation. And be open to receive it. That's what I tell parents. I'm a basketball coach now. I tell parents, listen to the children. Let me say this, and I'm going to give you scripture always. The Bible says a child shall leave them, so you better listen to them. <laughs> and what you think God put them in your presence for? Amen. One thing about kids, they're going to hold you accountable. They may not be doing what they're supposed to, but they're going to tell you and they're going to be bluntly honest like, well, you ain't did this, this, and this. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you have to get upset, but if you are comfortable in yourself, let me say this and then we can say oh. When you're comfortable in yourself and comfortable in Christ, you can't make me angry. Y'all might not realize that, but when I'm comfortable in Christ, you can't make me angry. What can you say or do to throw me off? When I'm comfortable and I'm lined up with Christ and I know who I am, there's nothing that you can say or do that can throw me off. Doesn't mean they're not going to try. Sometimes it might just be you just have to open your mouth and say Jesus. Mm -hmm. When you start going in stores, start anointing the store, they ain't got to know in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. huh. Now everybody walk in here. I've gone in stores where I've been listening to praise music in the car, and I just kept it going and then turned the volume up. Like, Lord, I don't want to be too, uh-uh. Turn it up. And walk right through the store. And sure enough, I see one like, hey, wait a minute now. Like, I needed that. And now the situation's moving. Yeah. You know, let me say something. It's, it's almost like me sending out blessings every morning. Mm -hmm. um, again, same friend. She uh, says, okay, her uh, nephew has uh, cancer, mm -hmm. right? She, whatever I send, she passes it on, mm -hmm. which passes it on. Come on now. Until it gets back to a full circle. You can't even see how far it passes on. Yeah. Right. So every day I send, I put up a blessing. It's, it's been going viral. Yeah. And I said, you know what? I read them before I put them on it because I'm like, this is what I'm going to put on it today. And I can say this is for the mall. But then when I go to the mall, that one still be sitting there. Mm -hmm. And I read something else and I'll put that on there. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've been doing every Amen. single day. Amen. And I do it on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram every single that's day. Good. Somebody going to see it. It might not even be right now. But notice that. You're not looking for the physical comfort. Right. You're just doing it because of Christ, which right. takes work because yeah. we all want to be comforted in our weakness. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nobody wants to be reprimanded. Nobody. And if you do, like, don't be harsh. Right. Don't just bash me in there and run off. Right. So we appreciate you all today for coming. We thank you. We appreciate this good word. We hope that this week you are comforted with the same comfort that God gives us. Amen? Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace and mercy, which is sufficient for our lives. We thank you for being compassionate to us. We thank you that we keep you as the leader and ruler of all and over our lives. So right now we ask you to give us a spirit of joy and peace, of happiness that will allow us to go out and spread the word and the gospel to others, Lord. We thank you that whatever areas that we may be wounded in or we may be hurting right now, that you show us compassion and love. Not our personal feelings and flesh, but show us through your grace and mercy. Touch our mind, body, and spirit so that way we can have a heart and compassion for you to show to others. Use us as a vessel to help win others for Christ and to pray and help change this world. We thank you today for these many blessings. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.